blessings this morning. Today we are going to continue on our journey through the Bible, discovering some of the many unlikely everyday heroes throughout the Bible. This week, we're looking at a man who, by all intents and purposes, would not have been considered great in the traditional sense. John the Baptist. John was born to older parents He was born of a priestly lineage, yet he never, ever wanted to serve, had a desire to serve as a priest. John lived in a life of solitude, and yet was born and sent specifically to prepare the way for Jesus. He was a devoted follower of Christ, and always strived to live his life according to Christ's teaching. This morning, we'll look at the life and the ministry of John the Baptist, as well as what makes him a hero. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, help us to meet you as you come to us. Help us to prepare a place for you in our lives and to announce your coming to others. Lord, we offer to you the parts of our lives that need healing. In doing so, may you fill fill us with light, level out our uneven parts with grace, and grant us the Spirit, to help us help others. And now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, prior to chapter 40, the news spoken in God's name was filled with judgment. The people of God had rebelled against God, The people of God had lived their lives with no concern for their neighbors. The people of God had put their own desires above the needs of others. Then from chapter 40 forward, the judgment of the world is in the past. God instead is now offering the people a word of comfort and hope for a new future. God offers an imperative to comfort in the opening verse and then expands on what it means for the people of Jerusalem to truly receive and accept comfort from God. Isaiah's message is going out to a people in exile, a people who are in need of hope and comfort. This makes it even more imperative that they hear the voice of God offering this message and what to follow, a path to follow. Isaiah isn't just talking about building a straight path. He's talking about building a path with many byways and highways. The Romans built their roadways straight, leveling mountains, filling valleys, and removing obstacles. The path to God is one that may not be straight, but it does have a destination that is worth the journey. Much like the Romans were committed to the completion of their projects, God is also committed to the redemption of God's people. Indeed, this passage begins with an insistent double imperative, comfort, comfort. Along with this comes the parallel command, speak tenderly. This poignant command not only names a deep human desire and need, but it also reminds us of countless other biblical examples of seeking comfort and showing kindness to others. Interestingly, Isaiah 40 is not directed at comforting any one particular person, but rather simply God commanding that all people be comforted. It is Jerusalem, a people who previously prospered through wickedness, oppression, lies, and injustice, who God first commanded to receive the comfort. In the context of the book of Isaiah, the people of Jerusalem, time and time again, have refused to heed the prophet's calls to repent, reform, and be reconciled to God. And yet God still offers, and in fact commands them, to be comforted. Immediately following this commandment to be comforted is the instruction to prepare the way of the Lord. The release of all of their sins of the past is combined with the announcement of the coming of the Lord. The Lord's coming is intended to offer comfort, not withering judgment. It offers a transformation of the wilderness and the desert. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain 
and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. God is committed to and involved in creating this new future. That is indeed true comfort. As we've read, the prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of John the Baptist, who in turn prepared the way for Christ. But who was this John the Baptist, and why him? John the Baptist was a great man, but maybe not so in the traditional sense. When we think of greatness, there's often one or two criterion that come to mind. Either there's greatness as it, in terms of privilege, accomplishment, money, and power, or there's greatness that can come from someone's lasting significant impact on the world in a positive way. John's upbringing does not fit into either of those categories specifically, yet he was what the angel Gabriel said he would be, great in the sight of the Lord. And in the end, his message of preparation, I believe, did leave a lasting impact for many generations. Although he is best known for being a baptizer, hence his name, his life and ministry on earth was much, much more than baptizing. John's adult life was marked by unending devotion and total surrender to Jesus and to doing kingdom work all over the world. John's voice was a lone voice in the wilderness as he proclaimed the coming of the Messiah to the people who desperately needed a savior, but who were also unwilling to admit that. John was one of those early, earliest known evangelists, sharing with all who would listen, and some who would not, to the message of good news and the coming of the Messiah. John was indeed a man filled with faith and a role model to those of who, those who wished to, to serve and have their faith grow. One of John's greatest strengths was his focused and faithful commitment to the call of God upon his life. He took his calling very seriously and lived into the responsibility and privilege of being set apart for God. John knew he had been given a specific job to do, and he was going to do it to the best of his ability. He did not only talk about repentance from sin, but he lived a life led by repentance. He not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk. He lived with boldness and great purpose, always willing to take a stand against sin. Most everyone, believers and non-believers alike, have at least heard of John the Baptist He's presumably one of the most significant and probably well-known figures in the Bible. John was, in fact, the first prophet called by God since Malachi, some 400 years before. Excuse me. I'm trying to clear my throat and not make that sound. We read that John's own coming was foretold over 700 years previously. Clearly, God had a plan for him had a plan for him to do great things. John the Baptist was a prophet, but not just any prophet. He was considered the great prophet whose return signaled the coming of the Messiah. With John the Baptist showing up in the wilderness, the reign of the Christ was surely being ushered in for all of Judea, for all who would like to be baptized. John the Baptist as a prophet, is also a truth teller. John has come to pave the way for Jesus, for God's incarnate. This is the truth. Through God's decision to become human, God shows a commitment to all that it means to be human. Joy, but also the need for comfort. Anxiety, but also the presence of peace. Uncertainty but also the security of promise. Through God's direction, John the Baptist challenged the people to prepare for the coming of the Messiah by turning away from their sin and being baptized as a symbol of their repentance. 
Although he held no religious or cultural power or influence in the Jewish political system, he delivered his message with a sense of urgency and authority. People were inspired by the overwhelming truth of John's words as they gathered around in masses to hear him and to be baptized by him. And even as he attracted the attention of the crowds, he never lost sight of what his mission was, to point people to Christ, to lead them to Christ. As he stated, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John truly was a dedicated follower of Christ, even before being a follower was cool. John's mission can be summed up by one single word, preparer. His job, his purpose in life, was to prepare the people for the coming Messiah. Both the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Malachi announced that he would prepare the way for the coming of this Jesus. The fact that the birth of the church, the birth of Christianity, was such a resounding success impacting the ancient world and countless generations until today is a true testament of how well John accomplished that mission from day one. John the Baptist paved the way for the Messiah. Are there ways in which we as Christians can pave the way for Christ to enter into the lives of those that we encounter, into our families, into our community, and into our world. When we follow in the footsteps of John, there are several ways that we can do just that. First and foremost, we must believe and put our whole faith in God and in the redemption that we receive through Jesus. When we strengthen our faith through prayer and devotion, Jesus' light will shine through us to all whom we meet. Like John, we must be strong in our convictions, willing to stand up for what we believe in, and stand up for God. John knew that what he was doing was risky business, but he also knew that the message of the Messiah was worth the risk. John prepared the way for Christ, and now we can live our lives in such a way that our lives prepare the way for others to experience Christ more fully in their lives. Please pray with me. God of truth and God of light, you have promised us a blessing and delivered. Through deserts and up mountains, we follow Jesus. And it's there that we find you and ourselves as we were meant to be. May we go from this place led by Jesus and led by our faith to be the light of Christ to all whom we meet. Amen.